One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked Jesus, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to Jesus, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to the man, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I know, like me, many of you have been keeping a close eye this week on fires that are burning in different places throughout California. Perhaps you have friends and loved ones in some of those places. That's true for us in Thousand Oaks and Ventura County. Uh, Now those fires raging toward Malibu, uh, north of of Chino. Um, Terrible fire there as well. Uh, We continue to pray uh, for those who have been affected and for those places where Lives and property are threatened. For many in California and the West Coast in general, the question I'm about to pose is not a theoretical question, but a practical one. If the fire is threatening your house and you have to evacuate, what do you take with you? Of course, beyond the people who are in the house, you begin to think perhaps of animals, maybe some old pictures or family heirlooms. Maybe you'll move on then to other items like computers, or if you're me, guitars. (laughs) But these latter items can be replaced. John Foreman is the lead singer of a band called Switchfoot that is from North County, San Diego. And John was living there in in San Diego area, was going through this experience himself a couple years ago, that he and his family had to evacuate, and they had to decide, without very much time, what to take with them. And the experience as they were, the feeling as they were then driving down the road away from their home that they didn't know if it would be there when they came back, uh, inspired him to write a song. That's what John does. He has written hundreds and hundreds of songs. And this one is called, If the House Burns Down Tonight. Uh, Highly recommend it for singing in the car at the top of your lungs (laughs) or uh, dancing in your living room. I may or may not have done that myself, uh, sometimes through tears. But uh, the lyrics to the song begin in this way. And Eric, if you have the clicker, if you can move the slide forward one. These are the first lyrics to that song. Ashes from the flames, the truth is what remains. The truth is what you save from the fire. And you fight for what you love. Don't matter if it hurts. You find out what it's worth. And you let the rest burn. What would you save from the fire? This is essentially what the scribe is asking Jesus in this text, in our gospel reading this morning. If the whole thing were to burn down, if we didn't have a religion anymore, if the Jewish religion for Jesus was all but destroyed and you could only keep one thing, what would it be? Of course, Jesus, like many of us, has a hard time saying just one thing, So he gives two passages from the Hebrew scriptures. The first is Deuteronomy 6, 8, a passage that uh, was in our first reading this morning and that in Jesus' day, a good Jew would wake up and recite this verse every single morning. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus actually adds with all your mind here. That's not in the Hebrew Bible. Uh, perhaps indicating the intentionality uh, of, of following Jesus with everything we are and, and with, our, with our whole minds and the intentionality of training ourselves to, uh, training our minds to act in love for God. And then he says the second is this, and this second passage comes from Leviticus chapter 19, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In Matthew's version of this story, uh, he has Jesus saying, on these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. In the book of Galatians, Paul says something similar. We had this verse in our Bible study this morning between services that love fulfills the law. And so for Jesus, these two things, love for God, love for neighbor, become a lens through which to view the entire life in relationship with God. And so the question that I think confronts us when we read this text is, do you really believe this? Do you believe that the most essential thing in your life the thing on which everything else hangs is love of God and love of neighbor. And if so, does your life reflect that belief? We're entering into a series for the next three weeks called For the Sake of the Kingdom, and it's an invitation to examine the commitments in life. What is your number one priority? The call of Jesus is to make the kingdom of God your number one priority. The kingdom of God that is breaking into this world in the present, that began breaking into this world through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ almost 2,000 years ago, but continues to bring healing and wholeness to lives and to all creation, one person at a time. The call of Jesus is to make this powerful movement of love called the kingdom of God your number one priority. To live for the sake of that good news of God's kingdom breaking into the world. When you do that, when you make the kingdom of God your first priority, your, your first allegiance, it doesn't take away from your other commitments in life but it does relativize them. It puts them in their proper place and in fact gives them deeper meaning. When your first allegiance is the kingdom of God, every other commitment you have has to be viewed in light of your commitment to God's kingdom. And so today we're celebrating Veterans Day, thinking perhaps of our commitment to our nation, our country, but that commitment is only after our primary allegiance to the kingdom of God. It comes after that. We just voted on Tuesday. Perhaps you have an allegiance to a particular political party. But as a Christian, that allegiance should only be as deep as what they say and do aligns with the values of the kingdom. That allegiance to a political party only goes insofar as it aligns with the values of God's kingdom. Perhaps you have a commitment to a church community. And hopefully you see that commitment as integral to living your life in the kingdom of God. But still, your commitment to the church is not the ultimate commitment. And your Allegiance to the kingdom of God can give meaning to those other things, can give meaning to your political activity or uh, to your involvement in the church or to your commitment to your family. I partner with my spouse in seeking to live as a citizen of the kingdom of God now, sharing God's love through the things that we've been given. And 
I'm raising children to be citizens of the kingdom of God, part of this movement, the greatest force for good the world has ever known. And so my commitment to God's kingdom gives purpose and meaning to my commitment to my family. Or volunteer commitments are then seen as a a way of loving service to my neighbors as a witness to God's kingdom. How does a hobby align with the kingdom of God? It's a way for me as, as a guitar player, it's a way that I can use the creative gifts that God has given me to witness to God's love. Or perhaps your hobby is, uh, helps you enjoy the wonder of God's good creation and share that wonder with others. Viewing your life in this way keeps everything else properly aligned. If your primary allegiance, your primary priority is to the kingdom of God, then that helps keep all of your other priorities in straight and it, and it gives meaning to all those other commitments in your life, energizing everything else you do. When we don't put our priority towards the kingdom of God in its its proper place, then when other tasks take that place instead, we we then start to look at those other commitments for meaning and for life, and they don't have the power to give life. Only God does. And so they begin, instead of giving life, they begin to consume us and exhaust us. Later in that song, If the House Burns Down Tonight, uh, John Foreman sings this. If you'll hit the slide one more time, Eric. I've given too much of my heart away. My soul is holding on like a house divided. Light a match and it burns down like a masquerade. I had to let it go when the fire ignited. When we divide our primary priorities and allegiances too many different ways, the danger is losing sight of what's most important. Now hopefully this question of the priority of the kingdom of God in your life is integrally involved with the church. The church isn't the only place where you live out your love of God and of neighbor, but it certainly should be an essential part of it. And so the the corollary question that I want to ask today then is, do you really believe in what we're doing here as the church? Or if you're visiting here today and, and perhaps you are involved in another church community, do you really believe in what your community is doing as the church? As we sang about in the song and the children's message today, some people just go to church. It's what they've always done. Perhaps they don't really put much thought into it. Other people are the church. Do you go to church? Or in your mindset of your involvement in the church, do you recognize that you are the church? Is it essential to the way that you live your life? Do you see what we're doing here as essential to living out your commitment to the kingdom of God? I hope you do. I hope you believe that we're faithfully interpreting the scriptures and proclaiming the gospel, the good news of God's love for all people through Jesus Christ. And I hope You believe that the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus forms a a new community that partners with God in spreading that good news to all the world and that we are a part of that community in the world today, a part of that movement of God's kingdom in the world today. And so we proclaim it, that good news. We proclaim it in worship. We live in loving community together and we proclaim it in loving service to our neighbors. And I pray that you see the importance of deepening your faith in that good news, in that gospel of God's love through Jesus Christ, to deepen that that faith through study, Bible study, and faith formation, and faith education, and building one another up through fellowship and ministries of care. Do you really believe in what we're doing here at Trinity? 
and that what we're doing is essential to your commitment and your priority of the kingdom of God in your life. Hopefully you see that there's nothing more vital to that commitment than your commitment to the church. Because it's the church that helps you live out those two greatest commandments. This community as we gather together fosters your love for God and both teaches you how and gives you opportunities to love other people. And if those aren't the most important things in your life, loving God and loving others, I would ask, what's more important? In the end, Jesus' answer to the theoretical question of the scribe is also the answer to the all too real circumstances of life that we eventually all find ourselves in. The difficult times, the hard times, the tragedies. When tragedy does strike, when difficult times do come, what will you hold on to then? What will become most important in your life? Not sports, not business, not other interests or hobbies, but the people and the God who holds on to you through anything. One more group of lyrics from John Foreman's song. I can hear the motor running down the interstate and all the distractions fade away. And if the house burns down tonight, I got everything I need with you by my side. I see this, that next slide. I see the smoke piling up in the rear view mirror. Yeah, but I ain't ever seen it any clearer. If the house burns down tonight, I got everything I need when I got you by my side. And let the rest burn. Now perhaps you see why I said sometimes singing this song through tears. The more you focus on the things that matter most, now, the more you've invested in the love of God and in loving people, the more you will be ready to deal with those hard times when they come. Because then, you will know the God who is with you. Not just know that God is with you, but know the God who is with you. And you'll have a loving community around you so that you won't have to go through anything alone. So let's be the church together. Amen.